Welcome back, Canonites, for what will pass as a Christmas slash holiday update. Recently, the Halo Wars 2 beta has updated, now titled Blitz Beta. If you are unaware, there is an upcoming second beta that will focus on the new Blitz mode, wherein players have decks of cards that allow them to call in units rather than establishing bases. The second beta will, based on current reports, be available for both Xbox One and Windows 10 PC and come out sometime in January. While the updated beta can be launched, you can't really get past the intro screen. However, the intro screen has been updated with some very interesting visuals. Whenever you launch the beta, you will be greeted by one of at least seven backgrounds. All have interesting visuals that I figured we'd discuss briefly, and we'll start with one that focuses on Marines. The Marine menu, as I call it, includes a number of Marines, two Jackrabbit units, and the new Grizzly that now features rocket launchers. The Marines themselves are fairly interesting too. They sport a new armor that looks to be a mix of Covenant War and Post War. The helmet is much more in line with the Post War design than the Covenant War, as is the body. Although, there's a much more Covenant War color scheme, and the designs are simpler than what we see in Halo 4 5. What really caught my eye though is that they're wielding MA-37s, known among naval units as the MA-5, the predecessor to the MA-5B of Halo CE. While the MA-5B was used in Halo Wars 1, this is a change I'm personally okay with. We never actually knew when the MA-5B entered service, so Halo Wars 1 could have been when the Switch was being made, at least in the Marine Corps. The MA-37 also has a strong connection with a time earlier in the Covenant War, and in my opinion, helps further sell just how behind the times the Spirit of Fire is. The second menu we'll discuss is one featuring two Cyclopses, featuring the new heavy machine guns, a Wolverine anti-air tank in the background, and the new sniper unit. The robot thingy floating next to the sniper is likely what provides the cloaking scene in-game. These units are also capable of using the M99 Statue Gauss rifle in-game, a rifle first seen in the bonus page of the Halo graphic novel. The third menu features a Kodiak, a Jackrabbit, and Hellbringers. And boy, are they bulky as hell, likely to provide protection from the heat. Still, with all that padding and gear, they must be jacked. What's really interesting is that it looks like they're wielding M7057 flamethrowers rather than the NA4s used in Halo Wars 1 although that doesn't even start on the overall redesign we're seeing. The fourth menu features an open blister back, two banished hunters which look badass as hell, and an honor guard. Starting with the hunters, I think more so than any other unit, we see just how much banished gear is just sort of welded together. The shields and armor in general, and really this goes for just about any banished unit, look like they were just kind of thrown together with extra plating welded on. Moving over to the Honor Guard, he is something really interesting. This one wears a new set of armor, the only thing that really resembles the classic from Halo 2 or Halo 2 Anniversary being the helmet, which has also taken on a much more brutish look. The leg, forearm, and shoulder armor are all new, distinct from the Honor Guards of old and from that worn by Sankili Infantry among the Banished. Though on the subject of Honor Guards, I can't help but wonder, one, are they actually former Honor Guards, and two, are they in service to let, or do they guard someone else? What exactly is their role? Our fifth menu features a Banished Locust, a Banished Chopper piloted by a Brute, and Sunghealy Infantry. The classic Chopper, as we saw in Halo 3, was clearly something scraped together, despite being produced by the Covenant. This new chopper, despite all the pointy parts, actually looks much more refined and, in a weird way, smoother. The old chopper was a brutal, if not fragile, vehicle. This new one looks to be a proper refinement of that design and much sturdier. The elite infantry are what really caught my eye, though. While the body armor is very much taken from H2A designs, the helmets look like a strange cross between those from Halo 2 Anniversary and the ones seen in Halo 3, especially with that extra bit of armor jutting out from the back of the helmet. It's an odd design to say the least. Also of interest are their carbines which feature the classic green glow of the Type 51 model rather than the blue of Halo 5's Type 57. Another indication of the Banished using recovered Covenant tech. Our sixth menu switches over to a stronger Brute theme. We have two Banished Wraiths, a Banished Ghost, and a new Brute unit in some extremely top-heavy armor wielding a gravity hammer. Certain aspects of the armor does have a passing resemblance to the Brute Warlord from the Beta, a hero unit for Atriox, but I couldn't say if it's supposed to be an upgraded version of that unit. Maybe it's a special unit for Decimus. We'll have to wait to find out. The seventh menu is probably the coolest. We see in the background the new Marauder vehicle, on the right a Brute with some grunts, and dead center we see Decimus in his power armor. Spoilers ahead for the first level of Halo Wars 2. 
Towards the end of the first level, the players encounter Decimus in this armor. Special thanks to Green Skull for the in-game images. You can check out the gameplay I took these from on the Ready Up Live channel, link on screen and in the description box. We don't know a whole lot about this armor, but it looks like it was kind of cobbled together from scraps of UNSC mechs, specifically Cyclopses. It also wields a giant badass mace. Finally, we have a new image of the strange new Spartan armor, first spotted in the original Halo Wars 2 beta menu. I don't know where this image comes from, but credit to it goes to GameCheat13. Originally red, now green, this Spartan, wearing an armor design that seems to be an odd mix of Mark IV and Mark VI, is now wielding a classic Spanker rocket launcher. More than ever, I am convinced this is Douglas. Besides Douglas' armor being trashed by Atriox, he'll obviously need a new set, and the original red version having Douglas' emblem, Douglas was always seen wielding a rocket launcher in gameplay sections in Halo Wars 1, just like this mysterious Spartan. I'd cue an Incredibles clip, but I don't want to risk the copyright strike. And that's everything so far from this update. All the models we see in the menu look to be high-poly renders of the in-game models used by Creative Assembly, rather than stuff made by Blur for cinematics, which might explain certain differences. Although, some of the difference, such as the flamethrowers on the Hellbringers, further support a long-standing theory that the Spirit of Fire are going to be upgrading with any modern equipment they can find on the Ark. Hopefully we'll get an explanation in a Cannon Fodder article, if not in Halo Wars 2 itself. Thanks for watching as always everyone, and I hope you have a happy holiday no matter what that holiday is, or perhaps isn't. See you around. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.